itself, it's going to send this message to this test app delegate instance. And it's gonna this it's gonna send number of rows in section, and what it's asking for is um, how many rows are in a given section. So it'll send this message and it'll attach or it'll provide the section that it's currently trying to draw in as a section parameter. So if you had five sections, it'll send this message uh, five times, and each time it'll store how many rows it needs to output for that given section. Um, to if you wanted to change the default value for a number of sections in the table view is one. You can change that with a another method, number of sections in table view. But um, I we're only going to be using one section here, so we don't need to implement that. So let's um, do this here. We the number of rows is going to be how many how or how many objects uh, we have in our content array. So simply return content array count, and that will tell our table view how many how many rows are in our one section. So the next method is equally as important and is part of the delegate protocol, the UI table view delegate protocol, which is as well uh, implemented automatically and goes like so: UI table view cell so the return type is going to be a table view cell instance um, you could think of a UI table view cell instance as basically one row of information or one line in the UI table view so one cell per row table view UI table view table view again um, and cell for row at index path and that's index path index path again I'm going to drop this down here all right so this is uh, this outline here is pretty self-explanatory it's the table view for every um, every row information it'll send it'll call to this message once per row or per cell and ask for the exact table view cell that it need that needs to draw out. So um, what the the index path uh, has been modified for UI table views, NS index path that is, and Apple has added two properties, one called row and one called section. So um, if you have two sections and you're in section number two and row number three of that section, the index path will have uh, row 3 and section 2 as its properties. So uh, you could, you can, we can retrieve the row we're in simply by doing index path dot row. So now let's actually implement this. So um, this next part is going to seem a little weird at first, but it does make sense and it's extremely appropriate for an, something like an iPhone. And I'll explain how it works in a minute. So first we're just going to type out static ns string identity equals main cell. That is going to be an identity we use to identify a type of cell, and I'll explain exactly how that all works in a minute. So just uh, type this all out for me, and I'll explain it. So UI table view cell cell equals table view. Again, we get this table view. The table view is sending this message to this instance, and along with that, it sends uh, a link basically to itself. So this is what we're sending this message to. We're sending this message back to the table view. Table view dequi re reusable cell with identifier identity. And now this next line, just I'll explain this in a minute again. If cell e equals nil cell equals Three open brackets here. UI table view cell alloc in it with frame CG rec zero reuse identifier identity and auto release. So now, what does this all mean? Well, <clears throat> Apple has done something actually quite clever here with the uh, iPhone table view. What they've done here is they've made it so that 
the table view can conserve memory massively. If you, let's say for instance, you have a table view and every row of information or every cell in your table view is set up the same way. So for example, like we have in this table view here, every um, row has an image and some text next to it. Or you could, let's say your table view just has text, every row has some text. Or just images or something else, anything, any, any uh, group of rows that all have the same template, so to speak. If, if every row has the same template, then why bother making a bunch of extra instances of UI table view cell when we could just use one instance, modify it, draw it, then modify it again, then draw it, and just go all the way down the line where table view, the table view will call to this method, give back the table view cell that it last used to be drawn with, We'll modify it, we'll give it back to the table view, the table view will draw it, and then it's just a cycle all the way down the table view until we're done drawing out the rows. And you can see very obviously here that that's going to save massive amounts of space. So instead of, instead of having a hundred table view cell instances, we have one that we just modify, draw, and just keep doing that all the way down the table view. So exactly how does this work? Well, first we ask the table view for a UI table view cell instance that it used that had the identifier identity attached to it or main cell. If we didn't find anything, we go to the if statement if cell equals nil, in which case there the table view hasn't drawn any cell with this identifier yet, and we create a first cell or a first template cell for every other cell. So cell equals table view cell alloc or for allocate, and then the in it with frame reuse identifier method. What we're doing is we're creating a table view cell, the first one, or the only one, with an, a reuse identifier identity. So we're attaching the identifier identity to it so that in the next time this is run, we can find it and reuse it. So first we ask the cell if it has a table view cell it can give us. If it doesn't, we create it. And then it's just a cycle. So now, well, where do we modify it? Because there's no modification to the table view cell yet. Well, right here cell text, text being a cell table view cell property equals content array object at index index path row and again I said index, they modified index path so now row is a property and it gives you the exact row you're in and so as we do this we are basically pairing up the index path row we're on with the object the, in, the object at the index of that row of the content array so First row one will give us first, then the second row, change the index, will give us second. And then it'll go down until we get to the uh, last row. And we'll, where does ta how does table view know to stop asking? Well, from here. It already has stored the number of rows it needs to display. And then plainly return cell. And so this here is all we need. And so now we'll build this, and you can see that with just that simple little amount of information the table views knows exactly how to draw itself and will do so and there you have it first second third and um, with this you can draw anything out you'd like if we wanted to we could attach um, an image to the left side of the table view cell and just change the image as we go down or you could do uh, just an image or anything you want to. So that concludes this iPhone program tutorial. I hope you enjoyed and tune in next time.